Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me today for our fig to foe webinar, uh, giving you a little bit more insight on what it looks like to move uh, from the Family Health Group to the Family Health Organization. Now, today's presentation will be recorded, so if you do come in late or have to leave early, no problem. We will be able to send you a recorded version uh, for you to view at your convenience as well. I just want to point out that this presentation will be on the high level. Uh, so it might some of the information uh, might be applicable to you. You might know a little bit more about the, the faux transition. Uh, so I do encourage you to reach out to me after the presentation. Uh, with specific questions, um, you know, write them down and, and we can have a, a more in-depth discussion as to what exactly your process is going to be and what it means to you. Um, like I said, this is going to be at the high level and uh, some information, you know, you may know already, some you may not. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started today. So a little bit about Cirrus Consulting Group. Uh, we were founded back in 1994, headquartered in Toronto. There's two major business streams within our organization. One is on the lease consulting side. So we do lease negotiations for doctors and dentists across North America to de-risk them. Um, and, and more particular to you guys and to myself is the healthcare consulting team where we provide billing support, uh, operational support, optimization uh, initiatives across the for family health organizations, family health groups, and we help make sure that doctors are essentially even being pay paid for the care that they are providing. So some quick facts. Um, you know, family physicians now are, are the highest paid in Ontario than they ever have been. Uh, more than 75% of all physicians say, though, that they're not being paid according to the care they're providing. You know, they're, they're submitting billings for X dollar, and they're not necessarily getting that uh, on their RA on a monthly basis. Uh, the majority of physicians in Ontario are practicing in the FOAM model. You know, it, it is a lucrative model. It, it does promote a little bit more of a work-life balance, and, and we will get to all that uh, moving forward. And, of course... Physicians don't always look at how they're being paid. You know, first and foremost, you guys are physicians, and, and that's what we want to see. We want you guys to care for your patients. The business side of it oftentimes does take a back seat, uh, and that's where we come in, to make sure that you guys are being paid fairly and according to the care that you are providing. So the purpose of today's program is to increase your understanding of the FOE model, give you a, bigger, a better picture of what life will look like in the FOE, We'll do a little bit of a comparison between the Family Health Group and the Family Health Organization, what will change, what won't change, and again, leave you with a much clearer picture of what the FOE is all about, giving you a, a better idea of what life will look like in the FOE model. So the FOE model is a payment model, uh, whereby you're getting a fixed monthly payment for each patient that you have rostered to you. Um, rather than being paid on volume and how many patients you're being able to see in a given day, you're paid a fixed amount to have those patients rostered to you. So you're responsible for those patients. You're getting paid an annual fee to have them on your roster, but you're also being paid to see them each time. So don't worry, um, you know, again, from a, from a fee-for-service standpoint, you're still able to receive some out-of-basket billings, and you're still able to receive payment every time you see the patient, but you're also receiving a fixed amount every month for that patient being on your roster. Now, the biggest difference in your thought process is throughput versus access, whereas in the fee-for-service and family health group models, you want to see as many patients as you can. You want to see you know, 50, 60, 70 patients for some physicians, whereas in the FOE model, we want to cut that back and really provide the access to the patients that are medically necessary to come into the office. Prescription rules don't have to come in anymore. Things that, that don't really have a time-sensitive um, matter about them, you don't have to bring them into the office as frequently. So your bottom line, throughput versus access. So a few differences between the FOE and the FIG. Uh, in the FIG model, you have your comprehensive care payment, which is your fixed payment, which is roughly $35 a month, give or take. And in the FOE model, you have your comprehensive care, but you also have your base rate payment, which is the larger of the two, and in some cases is right around the $150, $160 a mark per month, per year range. So there really is a significant bump in income when moving to the FOE model, purely based on your roster size. 
Now, performance-based incentives, similarly to the FIG model, uh, you're going to get your fee-for-service, you're going to get your patient enrollment incentives up until June 1st at this point, now that the ministry has made some changes. Uh, you're going to get your preventive care bonuses, your special premiums. And then when you move to the FOA, you have something called the access bonus and shadow billing. And we'll get to speaking about these uh, as we go through the presentation. Roughly 70 to 80 percent of all income in the FOA model is fixed, and that comes from your ca comprehensive care payment and your base rate payment, so those two payments together. We're, we're seeing on average for our clients, it's about $200 per year with an even distribution uh, across all age groups and, you know, and male and female. So it really is a significant number that you're able to, uh, to get for having those patients rostered to you. So a little bit of an income breakdown. As you can see on the left there, your FIG income has a very small amount of fixed income, whereas, and, and in your fee-for-service, so your variable income, is quite large. So on any given month, I can definitely see from, from some of our clients anywhere from a, a you know, upwards of $20,000 variation on any given month in their income. So, you know, one month they're going to earn 20, the next month they're going to earn 40, the next month they're going to earn 30. So there really is a lot of variability when you're, when you're in the FIG or, or even fee-for-service world. So moving to that FO model gives you a significant amount of fixed income. Like I said, 70 to 80 percent of your income will be fixed in the FO model. So you're not going to have to worry about having those massive fluctuations. There will, of course, be some fluctuations, maybe two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000, based on how many patients you've seen that month, how busy you are, how many out-of-basket codes you've been seeing, how much complex care you've been providing. So moving to the full model really does give you that stability and, and ability to predict what your monthly income will be on, a, on any given month. Now, we do see about an 18% increase, give or take, uh, when transitioning to the FOA model. So we definitely see higher, we definitely see lower, but there really is a, an increase to income and the work-life balance, which is really the most important aspect in the FOA model. So a little bit of a FOA education. So there are six major income streams within the FOA model. Your capitation payment, as we discussed, is based on your roster. Fee-for-service billing is based on how many patients you're seeing on a given day, a given week, given month, uh, and how many out-of-basket codes you're going to be billing. So that's the complex care um, services that you're providing to your patients. Net access bonus, again, is a bonus available only in the phone model that is provided to you um, as a percentage of your total roster size that provides you uh, with incentive to provide access to your patients and, and stop them from going to the walk-in clinic. Shadow billing, which is a portion of your visit that you're getting for, for certain codes. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll get to that as we go along. Preventive care bonus, which again, comes over from the FIG model. And then your special premiums as well, which come over an, an additional three as well. So let's speak a little bit about capitation payments. So as I said earlier, it's, it's based on the age and sex of your patient. So, Depending on, on how old your patient is, that's going to depend on how much you're going to earn from them on a yearly basis. So someone, for example, a 75-year-old female is obviously going to earn you more than a 20-year-old male purely based on the fact that they demand more care from you. So we want to keep those older female patients on the roster. The younger male patients that don't pay as much, assuming they're not going to the walk-in clinics or searching around for other care, then they're okay. But once they start shopping around, that's where we want to get rid of them. And again, we'll discuss that as we go along. So your capitation payments cover 126 fee codes that are considered in-basket codes, your standard care. So your A007, for example, that you're going to see uh, most of your patients for, that's what you're going to bill. That's part of the, the 126 fee codes. Anything outside of that 126, so you know hundreds of other codes, are considered out of basket or part of your fee for service billings and are paid at 100% value. For example, diabetic care, smoking cessation, fibromyalgia patients, things like that. Now, keep in mind that you know while you're still in the fig, please do take advantage of the guaranteed income that is available through to you through your comprehensive care payment. As I said, $35 on average per rostered patient. But moving to the full model really does give you a, a really good sense of a boost in income. Um, and, and throughout the presentation, you'll, you'll really hear me say that over and over again, but it really is true. Uh, so the full model really, in most cases, does make sense for, for most physicians. 
So here's a breakdown chart of how much you're going to get paid per patient. Across the left side, uh, you'll see the dollar value per year, and across the bottom, you'll see the age brackets. So as I said, as you age, you earn more through, uh, through capitation for your patients. So it really is good to have a nice mix of patients. You, know, you don't want to have too many elderly patients because as they pass away, you won't have anyone uh, left on your roster and your income will take a significant hit. But if you have some of the younger patients that are going to age along with your practice, that's going to give you a good balance and, and obviously increase month over month and year over year as you practice. So what does fixed income give you? Not only does it give you more income um, and, and the predictability through the, through the capitation payments, but it gives you a little bit of flexibility. It gives you that, that ease of knowing that if you do go away, you're not going to earn nothing. You know, in the FIG world and the fee-for-service world, if you're not working, you're not getting paid. Whereas in the FO world, as, you know, as, assuming you have your rostered patients, you're still going to get that paid, uh, that fixed monthly income, um, and, and you're not going to have to worry about taking a, you know, some vacation time. As you can see on the chart there on the right, 600 patients gives you about $120,000 in fixed income. And if you go all the way up to 2,400 patients, that's $480,000 in fixed income. So it really is a good amount of money that you can earn in the FOE model. Um, and again, it is fixed on a monthly basis, so you don't have to worry about that. And having a well-managed roster, as I said, a good distribution of patients across all age groups, really will help with your transition and, and thereafter. And again, the FOE's greatest generator of income is your roster. So effective roster management, you know, a lot of people ask me, what's the right roster size? And there, there really isn't one right answer. It's really about each individual physician, what they're looking for, how much income they're, they're comfortable with getting, and how much access they can provide to their patients. So you have to find that balance because some, patients, some physicians who have 2,400 patients are able to provide that access to all their patients, whereas another physician that's coming in wouldn't be able to do that, and they're more comfortable with, for example, 1,200 patients. That's their tipping point. So it really is important to, to have the right roster size, right roster balance, um, making sure that your alignment between your EMR and your ministry roster is important as well. As I say again, the, the roster is your greatest generator of income in the FOE model, so it really is important that you have the right mix and the right patients on the roster and, and making sure that the ministry is aware of all your rostered patients. And that is definitely something that we help with uh, as, as, we, as we work together. So let's speak a little bit about fee-for-service now. So for fee-for-service, you can look at it in, in two groups at the high level, your enrolled patients and your non-enrolled patients. So let's speak about enrolled patients first on the left side there. You, as I said earlier, you have something called shadow billing, which is 15% value on the code that's being billed. So for example, if you see a patient that's rostered for an A007, the total value of that code is 3370. However, you're being paid your capitation payment for that patient. So the ministry gives you 15% value every time you see a patient for that code. So instead of the 3370, you're going to receive $5 and 5 cents. So you're receiving your capitation plus 15% of in-basket codes every time you see a patient. On the flip side, if you're seeing an enrolled patient for an out-of-basket code, so one that's not part of the 126, you are going to get that full value, 100% value of that code. Again, diabetic care, for example, fibromyalgia, smoking cessation, all those common codes are out-of-basket. And we do provide a list and, and our, our full billing guide, which does have um, a lot of helpful out-of-basket codes that we do see physicians billing on a regular basis. On the flip side there, on the right side, you have your non-enrolled patients. So although we want you to have as many enrolled patients as possible to generate your income, you will undoubtedly have some non-enrolled patients, patients that are going to the walk-ins too frequently, patients that live too far that only come to see you once in a while. There, there are different uh, variations for non-enrolled patients, but you will have them. Now, you still have your in-basket and out-of-basket codes for those patients, but you will get paid 100% value for all those codes. So uh, as you get paid only 15% for an in-basket code for an enrolled patient, you are going to get 100% value for a non-enrolled patient for an in-basket code. There is something to keep in mind there that there is a group hard cap. 
So within the, the faux group, the, the ministry wants to limit how many non-enrolled patients you're seeing for in-basket services. They, they, they don't want you to have, they, they want to promote rostered patients. So they, they want to limit that. So it's roughly about $60,000 per year per physician. And it's pooled together on the group level. So if you have 10 physicians in the group, that's $600,000 that you can spend uh, for non-enrolled patients in basket services. Again, pooled together. And we really have never seen any group come close to that, except one that was running a walk-in clinic at the same time. And it, it really is a very rare situation. But if that is something that you're concerned with, we'd be more than happy to, to speak further about that. And within the first year of joining a foe, uh, there really isn't a hard cap. So nothing to worry about there. As I said, our full practice billing guide, this is our what we call our cheat sheet, um, which is the common out-of-basket codes that are available to you in the FO model that we recommend keeping handy, uh, both for you and your staff, every time you're doing your billing, every time you're seeing a patient. So you can really get a hang of what out-of-basket codes are available and what you should be billing on a regular basis to maximize your income. So as I said earlier, diabetes management, very high dollar value. Uh, anywhere from approximately $216 per year in additional income on top of your capitation. So I mentioned earlier that we see it's about $200 on average per patient per year uh, with an even distribution ac across all roster sizes, uh, all uh, age groups. Um, so you're looking at about $400, just over $400 a year for a patient that has diabetes and that you're managing on a regular basis. So it really does make a huge financial uh, jump uh, when moving to the phone model with your diabetic patients. Anywhere from fifty to $60,000 for a total value of all your patients in an average roster size. Smoking cessation as well. Again, you're going to add your E079 to your assessment, then you're going to bill your KO39 twice, um, and, and total value is about $100 extra per year per patient. So again, on an average size, about $15,000 in, in additional revenue. So it, it really does give you that added um, income stream, so to speak, within the, within the FO model. So let's speak now a little bit about net access bonus. So as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a bonus potential that's paid to you uh, to keep patients in the office and not in the walk-in. Uh, so every time one of your patients goes to a walk-in clinic, your access bonus gets reduced dollar for dollar. So you'll start the year um, two, two six-month segments, so April to September and October to March. Um, and you're going to start that year with, with, half, with a full potential. Every time one of your patients goes to the walk-in clinic, for let's say an A007, your access bonus is going to get reduced dollar for dollar. Now, a lot of people think you know, when they first hear about this, oh, I, I want to try and get my full bonus. Really, that's not going to happen. Um, you know, some of our high-performing groups in, in some areas are receiving about 50% of their bonus, whereas the average, I would say, is probably uh, in Ontario around 10%. If that, and, and for our clients, it's in the, the 20 to 25 percent range. So it, it really is something that needs to be worked on and something that we continuously work with our clients to, uh, to help them better. And it, it, it's something that can't be overlooked um, because it, it is pooled together on the group level, even though it's paid individually. So negative members do impact those that are positive. So it really is important that the, the buy-in is there from the entire group, that everyone is supporting one another, that everyone is helping out when, uh, when possible uh, to help everyone maximize their bonus. So some of the ways or, or some of the challenges of outside use is it's hard to control patient behavior ultimately. You know, we, we, can't, we can tell them that we want them to come he to our clinic and, and not go to another one. But at the end of the day, if it's more convenient, if they work in downtown Toronto and they have a cold or a cough or you know, whatever it is, and there's a walk-in clinic at the, at the bottom of their office building, they're going to go there, which is understandable. But we want to try and limit that and, and keep those patients, uh, keep track of those patients, see how often they're going, because we want to make sure that we de-roster them at the appropriate the financial impact to you, the financial impact to our system, uh, to our taxes. So it, it really is important to educate them. Uh, not having open appointments during the day, 
really important to make sure that you have spots open for people to call in, for people to walk in, for those last minute issues, you know, the son get, or daughter gets sick during the day and they need to bring their child in, making sure that they're able to do so. After hours, in the FOAM model, you're required to have your after hours uh, during the week, depending on, on the group size, will depend on, on how many after hour clinics you have to have open. Um, but making sure that they're A, aware of them, and B, available. You know, a, a lot of times, parents or, or you know, adults themselves will want to come in after work or after school, whatever it is. So making sure that they're aware of, A, where the clinic is being held, what time is it being held, who's going to be there, and things like that. And then, of course, referral patterns. We want to make sure that we're referring to physicians, to other specialists, um, that if they're GPs, making sure that they have the focus practice designation and that they're not just another GP providing psychotherapy or sports management or pain addiction management, whatever the case is. So we want to make sure we know who we're referring to on a regular basis. So our process, uh, we have a proprietary process that involves uh, us collecting reports from you, your outside use management reports that you'll start receiving in the FO. And we sort of analyze what your patients are doing over a six-month period and, and sometimes longer to see what financial burden they're putting on your pocket. So, you know, for example, if they're earning you $100 a year, but they're going outside your clinic for $150 a year, there's a net loss there, and we want to remove them from your roster and get paid fee-for-service every time we see them. Again, that brings back the idea of having non-enrolled patients versus enrolled patients. So here are two snippets from, uh, from our outside use management report. So we want to show you on the left there what codes are being utilized and, and what percentage of, are being utilized. A007 will always be the biggest code uh, or the biggest piece of the pie, so to speak, uh, because it's the easiest one that they're going to build. It's a standard walk-in activity. We want to try and reduce that, but at the same time, we're looking more for those K codes, the really high dollar value codes that we need to, to speak to your patients about to say, you know, we've noticed you've been going for periodic health visits or we know that you've been going for counseling to, you know, another physician. Why are you not coming here? Is, is it, are we not providing you the right amount of care or availability or are you, we just not your provider anymore and we, we'd like to, to know? Uh, what days of the week are highest for outside use? So you can adjust your schedule accordingly. For example, if Tuesdays are your highest day, you know, maybe have a few open spots on Monday, a few open spots on Wednesday, and, and maybe even on Tuesday as well to help balance out uh, the, the, uh, the availability for your patients. So again, a little snippet from our, from our report. We show you the patient name, the health card number. Um, we're going to show you your annual capitation, your prorated capitation, and your outside use, and then your net position. So what that means is we're going to show you Again, back to my example of, you know, if you're earning, as the top patient there, $85, but they're contributing to $582 of outside use, if you derostered that patient, you would get back $496, which is a 580% return. So although you're going to lose out on some of the capitation payments, you are going to get that back through your access bonus, which is very important. Again, we're going to show you the number of services over the number of months, the earliest date of outside use, which is important because you can retroactively go back and deroster a patient for six months, uh, and the most recent date as well. So we can see if it, you know, for example, you know, you saw a patient that went out uh, outside the clinic on, you know, in July, and then again in August, and they haven't done it in six months. Chances are they, they you know, may have been a, a one-off thing. They're not going to go anymore. But if you see it, you know, began back in July, and you know now we're in March, and the most recent visit was in March, that's a problem, and we and we want to continue to to monitor and, and probably take that patient off the roster, uh, and we'll be able to have that educated conversation with them because we know what codes are being utilized. As you can see on the right side there, we'll provide you with the information to say, you know, Mrs. Smith went for, you know, whatever code what it was, an A07 or K. K13 or K007, whatever it is, counseling, addiction, uh, home visits even, so you'll know what to speak to that physician about, to, sorry, what to speak to that patient about. So your preventive care bonus, uh, I won't speak too much about this as, as you guys are aware of, of probably what it was in, in the FIG as well, um, but of course that transfers over to the FO model um, and you, will, you obviously will be eligible for that bonus um, just like you were in the FIG.
Um, so of course, you're going to get that two reports per year from the ministry, um, unfortunately still coming by paper, and you'll be able to, uh, to identify which patients need the service, what patients were provided the service, and again, that's something that we can help with on an ongoing basis as well, if, if that's something that's uh, a little troublesome to you guys. So your special premiums, again, in the, in the foam model, there's eight versus five in the FIG, um, totaling about $37,000. Um, as you can see here, the three in blue are the ones that are new to, for you guys to the foam model, so hospital work. Uh, if you guys do any work in the hospital, there is a bonus for that. Office procedures, so once you provide $1,200 in office procedures, you get a $2,000 bonus. And prenatal, if you're doing uh, prenatal services, which are P003 or P004 for the bonus uh, category, uh, you will get a $2,000 bonus after you've provided that service to five patients. So how can Cirrus help my practice? So all physicians are really looking for is some type of balance between income, work life, balance and flexibility within their scheduling. So we're trying to, to find what works for each physician. There, there's no one size fits all. Every physician is going to be different. Every physician is going to be looking for something different. So it's important to, to work with us to really develop a plan and, a, and a, an action plan that really allows you as a physician to be a physician and take care of your patients and not necessarily have to worry about all the ins and outs of the business side um, that, that we will help with and, and guide you through. So it really is important to, uh, to find that right balance for you. So we have a step-by-step -step process. So we're going to help you with educating your staff and yourselves. Um, in some cases, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with certain aspects of the FOE, we'll definitely sit and, and speak to you about that. Um, governance agreements are important because you want to make sure that your group is functioning properly and appropriately with it, within the FOE model. So we want to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Uh, if needed, group accounting, we're, we're happy to help with the banking or distribution of funds. You know, a lot of times the, the RA is confusing to look at or, you know, with the group account, depending on, on how your group is structured, you may need some assistance with that and we'd be more than happy to assist. Uh, we have accounting staff in-house that will definitely assist you with that. And income optimization, of course, our bottom line is to help you earn more income and, and do so in an efficient and effective manner. So we don't want you to work harder. We want you to work smarter. We want you to get paid for the care that you're providing already. Uh, and we provide the Cirrus Helps hotline. We're, we're here all the time to answer questions, both myself and my whole team. We're, we can answer via email, via phone, what, whatever is easiest for you. We are here to help. So how we help you utilize um, your data to optimize your income. So we provide uh, error report analysis. So we're going to look at your error reports on a monthly basis to see what codes are being rejected, why they're being rejected, what can be done to make sure that they do get processed. Like I said earlier, our outside use reports, making sure we're looking at what patients are going to the walk-in clinics, how often, at what point it makes financial sense to de-roster them. RA summaries. We collect your RAs on a monthly basis, uh, hopefully through your MCEDT account, and we input all the data to show you a month-over-month -month analysis of how you're being paid. Uh, you know, if there's peaks and valleys, why are they happening? We can have that discussion to figure out what needs to be done. Maybe, you know, in, in December you earned a little bit less because you were away for two weeks, but that's okay because you still have that base income from your capitation. It's just your fee-for-service billings were a little bit lower. Um, Roster reconciliation, again, making sure that we know who's on your roster and we want to make sure that the ministry knows who you want to be on your roster. So comparing your EMR versus your MOH roster, very important. Special premiums and bonuses. So making sure, again, that all your eight categories, if you're utilizing any of them, that they're being maximized. And ultimately, our Cirrus Physician Portal, where we house all this information. Uh, so working with me uh, and my team, you'll get to meet with one of our consultants. Um, on a you know, monthly basis, quarterly basis, however often is needed. Um, but also, all this information that we provide to you is on uh, what we call ShareFile, our, our Cirrus Physician Portal. And you have access, your staff have access to it if you like them to, um, to have it at, at any time. You, know, you don't have to worry about you know, printing it off or losing it. The, the information is always there for you. 
and we do provide a lot of guides and uh, resources up there as well. So as I said, it's tackled step by step. So we have to go through one by one each of the major income streams to make sure that we're maximizing our income according to your practice style. So we're going to make sure that the roster is, is the correct size and that they're all the right patients are on that. We're going to make sure that we're going to um, look at your billing analysis. So we're going to look at your fee-for-service billings. We're going to look at all the codes that you're billing on a given day, on a given month, to say, you know, your, your proportion of in-basket codes to out-of-basket out codes is a little bit high. So we want you to sort of look at what out-of-basket codes you could bill instead of those in-basket codes on certain visits. Outside use management, making sure that we have the right patients de-rostered at the right time. Preventive care bonuses, again, making sure that we help you with the submission, making sure that the tracking is done properly, exclusion codes, and again, with special premiums and bonuses also, making sure that if you're eligible for a bonus, making sure that you're getting it by billing the right code or submitting the right tracking code. This is a sample, um, just as like a month-by-month -month breakdown. It, it, again, it's going to be tailor-made to you. It's not necessarily, it, it, it's never one size fits all, so we're always going to adjust and, and make sure that we're doing what needs to be done on a monthly basis to help support you and your staff in making sure that your practice is running as effectively and efficiently as possible in order to maximize all your income. So a little bit about our professional fees. Uh, we do charge 425 per month on a two-year contract. Um, again, you're going to get a team approach. You're going to have not only access to your consultant, but an access to our entire team that is available to help you at the you know, drop of a pin that you know, we're going to make sure that your income is being optimized, that if you do have a question, that we're going to call the ministry if need be, or we're going to come out and help you with your you know, pulling a roster from your EMR or whatever the case is. We're going to be here to help you. Um, you know, we're going to analyze all your data that we get through MCEDT from your ministry reports, and we're going to give you a customizable program. And I think that's the most important aspect here is that we are going to work with you individually because, like I said, no two physicians are alike, and we want to make sure that each one of you is being optimized uh, to the best of your ability. You're buying an increase in income, of course, because we're going to make sure that you're running more efficiently and running more effectively. Find those hidden gems. Uh, we're going to look under all the rocks that are in your practice to see where we can find more income. We're going to help you find that flexibility and work-life balance. We're going to help you control your practice. We're going to try and reduce your overhead if possible. And of course, performing in the foe. So with more of a of a analytical process, but not necessarily from your standpoint. You, we don't want you to change the way you're practicing. We want you to just work a little bit more efficiently and, and build the right codes. You're still going to see your same patients every given day. So from that standpoint, not too much is going to change. So some of the key takeaways for today, um, for those in the FIG still, obviously review your bonuses that are, you're eligible for in those five categories. See about those other three, if that, that's going to be um, conducive to your practice when moving to the foe. Ensure that you have your rostered patients. Of course, moving to the foe, you're going to have to have all those patients rostered. So if you can start now, all the better. You can still earn a little bit more uh, during that transition process. And of course, set up your preventive care program to make sure that you're maximizing that bonus as well, because again, it does transfer over to the foe. And for the FO, consider transitioning to the FO for income predictability, flexibility, and that added incentive to treat complex patients. Uh, be aware of the outside use. Again, we want to keep patients in the office, not going outside of the office. And again, you have the ability to de-roster. So it really is important to know at what point it makes financial sense. Now, throughout the, the presentation, I have emphasized that the roster is the most important and we're going to make sure that you know that aspect of your practice is as streamlined as can be because it really is your greatest generator of income. So that brings us to the end of our presentation for today. I, I do appreciate your time and uh, I hope it was informative uh, for all of you. And again, any questions that you do have, my contact information is, is there. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. You can either give me a call or send me an email. We can set up a, a consultation either in person or by phone. 
and we'll be able to discuss further uh, about your transition or optimization of your practice if you've already made that transition. So again, I thank you very much for your time and uh, I hope everyone has a great day.